Please enjoy this video of Mark getting the car ready, my S14, for round one of Lone Star Drift, April 8th and 9th at Houston Police Academy. I'll see everybody there, or I won't. Let's get started. All right, guys. I'm back from my vacation after Drift Week, which was uh, fun, but a shit show. And uh, like I said, I had a vacation, spent some time with family, now it's back to working on all of the stuff that we put off before Drift Week and all the stuff that happened on Drift Week. So we're gonna start off with Aaron's car. Um, it didn't really get a lot of action on Drift Week, but it did take some damage. So we got the whole quarter panel crushed in there, broke the taillight even more than it was, broke the bumper more than it was. <laughs> Uh, we're missing like an entire section of it there. Let's see. This side looks like it did okay. Some side skirt torn up. That's probably from the dirt track though. Just like kicking rocks up at it. Same with most of that. Uh, let's see. This. Eh. Eh, close enough. Oh, what else? Corner light's been broken. Bumper's been broken. So no extra stuff there. It's super dirty though, obviously. Uh, side skirt got ripped off. Ugh. At some point. And then, I'm sure, yeah, the inside is just as dirty as the outside. I need to get all that cleaned up for round one, which is two weeks away. My car is under a tarp, or a nice car cover. Uh, I need to pull the transmission out of that and maybe put it in this one. It's Aaron's transmission, not mine, so it's not a big deal. This one's not shifting from third to second, and that's what caused that. Uh, he stalled out with another car behind him, one of our cars, <laughs> and they went right into it. Luckily, it was a Z, so the Z didn't really take any damage from it. Uh, it broke that fender, not this wheel, but it broke another wheel. Hmm, what else? I think that's it. I think I need to, first off, I'm going to swap that shifter, make sure that's not the reason it won't shift from third to second in drift. And if that's not the case, then I need to get that out, get a drive shaft made because that's a bigger output spline than this one. Uh, what else? I really think that's it for round one. We're not gonna make it pretty. I'm gonna give it a wash, obviously, because I do not want to work on this thing this dirty. I'm gonna get it up on jack stands, get all the wheels off of it. Do the whole off season thing, even though we didn't really get an off season. Uh, what other projects? Okay, so I started recording and I realized it's way too dark for you guys, so I went and grabbed the light. So, like I was saying, project-wise, we have oh, this guy. It is one of the rental Zs. Uh, I have a bumper for the back. There's a bumper in Houston for this that we went and got painted that I need to go pick up. So it needs both bumpers put on it. It needs a clutch. The NASCAR is still here. Still haven't done anything to it. I'll get around to that. Uh, truck maintenance obviously needs to be done. Thing needs an oil change. But other than that, I mean, it's a trooper. I broke the mirror, so gotta put mirrors on it. Uh, I have this guy, which belongs to Alex and Flo, our German friends. This is gonna be their new Mustang to drift here in the US. So that's coming up for me. What else? We have the white one. This one just came back from its fourth drift week, I think. I think it's been on four now. Two with us and two with the previous owner. And it's got some damage, not a whole lot. They did crushed the door, but they replaced it. 
But other than that, like this thing's a trooper. It has just been going and going and going. And then the dreaded Hummer. I have to, uh, right now I'm actually in the process of putting the interior back together because it kind of got left on hold. Uh, but this needs to go. So I have to do interior um, skid pans, I guess. They're not even really pans, they're just bars. They go underneath it, do something with the rear bumper. And of course, this guy, the one that everyone wants to see. Uh, I haven't touched this since the LZ festival and we've had it sitting here leaking oil, which I thought was coming from the rear main seal. But now that I cleaned it, I'm thinking it's not. But this was the big killer at the LZ Festival. That guy snapped, that guy bent, the springs tried to come out, it tried to pull the drive shaft out of the back of the transmission, and the engine shut off for some reason. So I'm gonna dive into this thing soon. We'll see. Fix a jack that messed up, there's a panel I missed. We have the 6.8 liter that uh, rod knocked. We haven't really talked about it, but uh, I messed up putting it in there and messed up an oil pump. And then we kind of fought it. Everything seemed like it was going to be good. And uh, the Thursday before we left for drift week, it rod knocked. So I had to swap it out. That's my motor, by the way. So I do have stuff for my car. It's not all Aaron's, but Aaron likes his stuff more than mine. So, of course, there's some of the body for the NASCAR or circle track car. There's the rest of the body. And we have the 5.7 that originally... Oh, this is the one. I was like, I couldn't remember what happened. This is the one that got the chunk ripped out. So the engine is mostly fine. I think it just needs to be reblocked. Obviously, everything gone through to make sure nothing got really messed up. Oh, well, I have this Tyler Cox car that's been sitting here for a year on the trailer in various states of taken apart and painted and not painted. Um, I need to uh, do another rack relocation because I robbed it from my car. And I think one of the axles needs rebuilt. Obviously, all the bodywork stuff still needs to be done. I don't know what kind of time frame we're doing with this one. But uh, my car, yeah, it's under there. It's not coming out. It's still beat up. The quarter panel's still crushed in. The door doesn't work, but I did get a door. It's in there. Um, I think that's pretty much it. There's a fancy Tyler Cox car inside, but I don't know if Aaron's ever really gonna do anything with that because it's so fancy and it, it's an SR car and we don't want an SR car. Although we do have enough V8s now to put in there. We just need some more transmissions. Yeah, so this is uh, gonna be my start of everything. I'm probably gonna clean this car, put that clip in there and uh, get started on showing you guys kind of uh what i go through i don't know i've done it a couple times i think but uh i'll show you how like i push out dents on aaron's car mounting stuff back on it what i need to go through for the transmission i'll talk to you about that and if i have to swap it out we'll go through the whole process of do we put a dog box in it actually or do we put that one in it aaron's kind of leaning towards the dog box but we will see so I'm going to get started on cleaning this thing. Alright, so my camera died last night in the middle of filming, but 
I got the car all washed up for the most part. I still need to clean the interior. And then today I'm gonna tackle that trans problem. I'm gonna pull that shifter that's in there out, put another one in it and see if that takes care of it. I really don't think it does, but it's a simple check just to make sure that I'm not putting a transmission in it for no reason. And then I need to get this dent out. So it looks straightforward, but this whole body is pretty separated. So I got to try to push it out without really doing more damage. And then that'll probably fix itself once I pop this guy out, put the side skirt on it, and this thing will be ready for round one. All right, so before I get started for the day, I thought I should thank the new sponsor, Grip Royal. They're gonna be supplying all the trophies for this year and have kindly ugh, given us some new steering wheels for the cars. So, nice little Lone Star Drift stuff there. Thing feels super good. It's a little thinner than the NRG ones, but I think that's gonna be cool. So, let's get this guy put on there. So a quick note, when you're installing one of these, for the first time, you wanna make sure your steering wheel is straight up and down. And then, depending on your wheel design, you either will have two or one in the center. This, the energy ones are set up with the one in the center, so the steering wheel would sit like that. But because these are this way, the steering wheel is gonna be crooked, which means I have to pull uh, either this off, and if there's a spot for it, rotate it, or I have to pull the actual hub off the spline and uh, center the steering wheel up that way. All right, so this particular hub doesn't have a bunch of holes in it. Some of them do they have a bunch of universal holes uh, so that you can basically end this up wherever it needs to be. But I got lucky. So it was here and putting it right there. I put a mark, uh, I put a mark there so I know but that puts my steering wheel basically straight up and down. So, I got lucky. All right, and to finish it off, we just have this one last, uh-oh, yeah. There it goes. One last piece, boom. Thank you, Grip Royal, for the new wheels for the cars. This is the first one, and uh, we'll be installing one in all of the other cars. So, thank you guys. This is the dumbest crap on earth, look at this. So the red car is the car I always drive. It has a built LS, whatever, it's a LQ9 LQ or something. Six liter, yeah. built, ported LS3 heads, CNC ported LS3 heads, aftermarket rotating assembly. Some kind of cam. Yeah, a built engine. Yeah, like yeah. it revs to 7,500. We beat the crap out of it. It's a fantastic engine. And then we're about to show you a dyno sheet of a S13 drift car with a 2J in here. And then also the 5.3 out of Mark's car that we bought from Summit for $3,600 for the freaking long walk. The motor, I have receipts for this one when I got it from Scotch. This motor was more than $9,000 in just receipts and they already had the motor from the machine shop, I think. So. The red line is my built six liter. That's horsepower and torque, the red one. The blue line is the freaking 5.3 that was $3,600 from Summit Racing. The 5.3 makes more power almost anywhere than mine. The, um, the six liter we rev out to 7,500. And the other one, wait, this dyno sheet seems off on yeah, RPM. Yeah, don't worry about that. It's RPM. just where it stops. Okay. And then. Um, so we rev the, the six liter out farther, but it still doesn't really make any more power, but it gives me more gearing options and stuff so I can stay in second longer. So the car feels more powerful. And then look at this. This, I still don't think these RPM are correct because there's no freaking way. But the 2JZ with a, a G35 on it is making 719 torque and 710 horsepower, which is nuts. It makes more torque than horsepower. I think it was at 27 pounds. But if you follow it down here, at 
3,000 RPM, roughly 3,200, it overtakes the LS motors and starts making more power, like torque. That is bonkers. That could that, be off by about maybe 500 RPM, but I wouldn't guess more than that. It has to be off. This is so dumb because I guarantee you my car makes more power like down low, it feels like. But this thing ramps up so hard. This has to be like 4,000 RPM because I've driven so many 2JZs with 35Rs and stuff on them. None of them have ever made good power below 4,000. Uh, Anyways. Actually, we can bring up Kenny's too. Uh, Kenny's is a G30. Yeah, but it would be the same RPM pickup. And I just don't believe it. This is too crazy. We can look at, we can look at his. Let's, uh, let's pull up. Can we pull up my, um, my 6.8 that Chris made us? Uh, if I can find it. So we just added the blue line, which is now the Stroker 6.8 I have um, from Just Racing. That thing comes up and it's making, God, 400 and something, uh, 530 wheel torque, but it makes a little bit higher, but it makes 500 wheel torque by 3,200 almost. It makes 470 torque right there. And then it's being overtaken by that Jay-Z by 3,300 RPM, which is hilarious. That is so nuts. And then we're not revving that thing out very far. We're doing it farther than that. Um, that's why I still think I don't, can't comprehend what's going on with all the RPM and stuff. Anyways, just thought all this was funny. Put Kenny's up there, would you? It, uh, it still didn't rev out as high as yours did. So, though. no, what's happening here is if you don't <laughs> stop the run, if you don't have the dyno stop the run, then it overruns and it messes up the whole dyno plot. So you have to stop it somewhere and we just stop it at arbitrary point, like a few hundred <laughs> RPM or a thousand RPM where you're actually gonna stop. Mm-hmm. All right, so I finally have the shop to myself. Uh, they're running in and out on this dyno all day, so I couldn't really have the car inside. But I have it inside now, and it's time to get to work on this dent. So I have to uh, get in here, and my plan is to basically get a 4x4, four four, probably, and put it against that, hold it with a big hammer, and just hammer this guy out. Uh, normally, you know, you could probably get in the trunk and kick, but there's a radiator. Okay, that's my plan. So I think that's pretty much it. You just uh, get the four by four in there and then just hammer away on it. I think I got one more hit. Just, uh, just to bring that bottom out a little bit more. See if I can hold this and do it. Fix that guy there. Um, I did, did realize that the transmission is going to have to come back out. I didn't do the shifter thing, but I drove it around. And if you go to third and then try to come to second while it's running, like driving, it will just lock you out of second. But if you stay pulled on the lock and you come down to basically like five miles an hour, the car will let it go into second. So that tells me it's a synchro problem. The transmission's still good. It just... Uh, it's gonna need rebuilt. So unless Aaron changes his mind, the plan is to pull mine out, which is actually his um, T56 Magnum, 
yeah. take it out, put it in his car, put my, that's on my engine over there, on my car with a new clutch. And I have a uh, new rack to put on it that I got from Drift HQ. Thank you guys. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna call it for that one. Uh, Aaron wants me to do two of these episodes a week. So this is the first episode. The next one will be on the transmission side of that. On this one, you know, I just went over cleaning the car and uh, diagnosing a couple of problems. I know I didn't really cover the transmission one. It was kind of boring, but uh, I got the dent pushed out. I saw that. I got it super, I wouldn't say super clean, but I got it a lot cleaner than it was. The thing was disgusting. I did miss some spots. It's what happens when you wash a car in the dark. But uh, yeah, I got to get this thing ready for round one, which is coming up in less than two weeks. So the next video will be me fixing this transmission, whether it's pulling this one out and putting a new T56 in there, or if it'll be me putting a T56 Magnum because my transmission is actually just a normal T56 and it was in good shape. So if it's crunch time, we might just throw that guy in here for now and then deal with the Magnum stuff later. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It was painful for me to do and edit, just so you know. Huge shout out to all these sponsors such as BC Racing Custom Coilovers, NK Wheels, Grip Royal, KBD Body Kits, Heat Wave Visual, Spec Clutch, Vaptasia, Valino Tires, and of course, WhatMonstersDo.com with their all new logo. Go to their website and use that discount code. Thanks everybody. Have a good day.